Welcome, everyone. Uh, let me get started. We're gathered here to witness a demo of the pet demon, which uh, we hope to fill a gap in security and privacy for end users, uh, pursuant to a MetaMask grant that we've been receiving, and uh, the and and in collaboration with the Duo Cap kernel team at, at MetaMask. The I think a lot of you have seen previous demos of the pet demon. This has been a work in progress for a while. And it's still a prototype, but it has a few new, uh, this demo will have a, a few new features. Specifically, it now has don't panic written in large friendly uh, letters on the cover. And uh, it's now TCP capable and, a two, uh, and we're leaning on tail scale for the purposes of the demo to do, uh, to, to carry all of the weight for peer to peer um, or the NAT traversal problem. Uh, which means that we'll be able to do a demo today where I will be sharing the stage with Eric Marks from the OCAPT kernel team at MetaMask. And we are going to Pet Demon with each other. Uh, so what's Pet Demon? Pet Demon's a tool. Uh, Pet Demon's a tool that uh, is sort of like a web browser and it's sort of like a wallet and uh, and it's unlike them in a, in a few interesting ways. It's a, it's a platform, a web platform built on the existing web platform and Agoric technologies that we use on our chain. Uh, it is different from it, it hosts web web applications in a way that is different from the way we normally host web pages, and that is to say that it breaks that umbilical cord that normally exists between the publisher and the user. Nor in a normal web page. Anytime you use a web app, a web application, including DApps, notably, it gives the DApp owner, the publisher, an opportunity to surveil the user. Um, and this is intended to, to make that more intentional and in the control of the user. And does that using uh, a private table of pet names. Pet names are self-assigned, private to the user names to identify powerful, capable objects that they can then control uh, that they can then control the dissemination distribution of um, and uh, and use that in order to grant authorities uh, to applications that they are running privately on their user agent without any, by default, any connection to the outside world. So they are very offline first uh, and very confined, more confined than a, than a standard web page. So with that... Uh, what I'm hoping to convince everyone on the call of in the course of this presentation is that this is a powerful, useful tool that will benefit Agoric, Modable, and, uh, and MetaMask uh, and, our, and the ecosystem that we're trying to build, uh, specifically something that I hope it to help Agoric with uh, in particular is that currently we use a smart wallet that makes the pet name choices um, public essentially. So that puts a little bit of a chilling effect on how people interact with their with their assets. They have to obfuscate to a degree. Um, and if those pet names were private to somebody's pet demon, uh, they, they would be a little safer. Um, for Modable, I think that this is potentially a command and control platform for IoT devices, because you could model IoT access and control capabilities as pet named things in somebody's demon. And if and for MetaMask, I think that this has the potential to make snaps plug to, uh, more more composable, or shall we say, to actually snap together, where uh, you can create a snap that both produces and consumes capabilities from uh, from other snaps. Uh, and I think that that'll make the platform a great deal more um, interesting. So uh, with that. Uh, let's take it to my terminal to get my daemon into, uh, into a working shape and, uh, and to demonstrate at least that I've got nothing up my sleeves. Uh, so with that, here's my terminal. I'm going to run these setup commands over here. And uh, no need to look behind the curtain, but the first command is endo uh, purge dash dash force. What this does is say, I want to start over from nothing. Uh, the second 
The second command, uh, then the subsequent commands are basically setting up my TCP driver so that I can talk to the public on our tail scale tail net, um, specifically Eric. Uh, so with that, it also installed my first application. And this application runs like all the other applications on in, in the pet daemon. Um, it's just a web page that is confined and can only communicate with the pet daemon itself, but it is granted all of my power as a user so that I can uh, so that I can use that to command and control the daemon. Um, and that is this screen over here. So this is this is what opened up. Um, on the right, you can see that I've got my inventory of pet names. Uh, and I have a little menu over here for all of the things that I can do in my pet daemon. Uh, some of the things anyway, it's very incomplete. These are all the verbs that, but these are all the verbs I'll be using for this demo. And then this big space over here for, which is basically chatting with my daemon as if it were a bot. Um, uh, so first let's take a look at, uh, what it looks like to publish an application. We're going to start with. Uh, I'm going to be a developer who is creating a rock, paper, scissors game. Over here, I have Rochambeau.js. Is this legible? This code should look and feel familiar to, to those of us at Agoric. Uh, uh, and and uh, the, since these are a lot of the same APIs that we use for our chain contracts, um, these are this, these are patterns and interface guards, which are describing or sort of a reflection mechanism for the APIs I wish to expose. I'm going to expose a server that has an attack method, and that will generate games, and I will be able to send that game to a friend, and they will be able to, to, to do the defense, and then both of us will be able to see the outcome from one rock, paper, scissors round. Um, this is a contract that was largely written by Dan Connolly that... Uh, uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, uh, just just uh, touched it up a little bit uh, for this demo, and it's ready to go. You'll note that it is tiny. This is the, the simplest, <laughs> the simplest confined application that we can run as a plugin within our uh, within our our platform. But the publisher has to do something first. That is endo bundle rochambeau.js and give it the name Rochambeau. Uh, actually, Rochambeau bundle. Okay, so now let's turn to my let's turn to my familiar chat, my chatting with my familiar window. Okay, so now I've got a Rochambeau bundle. That means that I can now go over to the cat and make. Uh, I'm going to make Rochambeau bundle. I'm going to grant it no authorities whatsoever. It's going to run on the main worker for, uh, and it's going to be Rochambeau. All right, I will take that contract and I will make an instance of the Rochambeau API. And there I go. I've got an alleged Rochambeau server. Uh, this does not yet have a user interface, but I can interact with it through JavaScript commands and message and eventual send messages. So uh, instead of, this is essentially Right. What if RPC were just object-oriented programming? So I'm going to say uh, the for the Rochambeau API, I want to call attack. I'm going to attack with rock. I'm going to endow this program because this program has no powers whatsoever by default. It can only compute and burn, you know, burn us one step closer to the heat death of the universe, but otherwise can't communicate or whatever. Uh, I'm going to endow it, that is to say, give it access to this Rochambeau, Rochambeau capability. It's going to have this name over here, which is the same as the name as it has over in my inventory. I'm going to call this game one, evaluate. All right, I've got a game. And now let's say I pass this to my friend. Today, my friend is myself. Aw. Uh, I'm going to defend with paper. Endow it with game one. And I don't care to capture the results, so I'm not going to name it. I'm going to evaluate that. Oh, look, paper covers rock. The defender wins. All right. So now I can play solitaire rock, paper, scissors, which is, you know, one step less interesting than playing rock, paper, scissors with a friend. Not by much, 
but a little. Let's uh, let's try this with a friend. Um, and for that, I'm going to go over to the cat menu, construct an invitation for a guest named Eric. And then I will copy this invitation. The invitation contains uh, an identifier for my daemon node, uh, which will be in the fullness of time a public key for cryptographic purposes. Um, and then followed by an identifier of the capability object that I'm granting him, which is uh, the guest powers for for uh, for him, so that he can then talk to me and uh, and dispatch dispatch messages and request things, and uh, and he will have the handle Eric in my chat messages because that's what I've chosen for his name. I could have chosen something less polite if I wanted to, but we're actually friends. Um, and then it also contains hints for how to connect back to me and uh, end the protocol. In this case, uh, my tail scale IP address and, and the port that I'm listening on. All right. So with that, uh, I know that Eric has been furiously copying this uh, from my screen. I will go and send that to him out of band so he doesn't have to do that so hard. Uh, Eric, over on our favorite secure um communications channel i have sent you an invitation to talk to my pet demon can you go look over in telegram uh, oh yes of course we're only using the most secure applications to share things uh out of band uh, also to uh dan Connolly's comment uh in chat uh you have a golden opportunity to boot up the demon on your device and uh impersonate me um but yes. uh, the window the window is rapidly closing <laughs> Okay, so I am uh, going to go over here uh, to my cat, and uh, to save time, I have already uh, set that up. And so I've received this uh, invitation string, and I'm going to say, okay, I believe that this is Chris who has sent me this, and then, then I'm going to accept that. Ooh, and now I have, now I have allegedly a Chris in here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and say to Chris, uh, hello, what's up with all this Rochambeau stuff? And send that. And then uh, if we uh, look over on uh, Chris's end of things, uh, he should have received a message from an Eric. All right. Let's take a look at my screen. Can we enable uh, Jules' screen sharing in this meeting? Uh, we haven't figured out how to play that, and we didn't rehearse it that way. So we're going to run with this. Um, we'll try to make it a little smooth. Uh, but yeah, oh, it looks like I did receive a message. What about all this Rochambeau stuff? Well, I've got this Rochambeau server. I'm going to start a game. Um, uh, e Rochambeau attack and i'm going to attack with rock and eric is going to feign ignorance and uh rochambeau game to evaluate okay now i have a game two in my inventory i'm going to chat at eric and here's the magic right uh hey defend yourself at game two. So the magic here is that I have sent Eric a capability to interact with this game two object and feel free to steal my screen. Um, which should enable him to, uh, to, to defend with his choice of weapon into results and now uh, with game two so i'm going to watch for the result locally that's going to take some you got my screen eric uh so i'm not uh seeing your screen right now i'm sharing mine uh but i am uh yes i'm going to so i have received game two here uh which is a uh a capability living on chris's device and i'm going to adopt that as game two for myself and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, defend myself. And so we're going to say defend 
I'm going to defend with uh, scissors. And then I will endow it with game two. And I also don't care about the result here, so I'm not going to name it. And then we will see what happens. But I've lost. It turns out I'm not that good at this Rochambeau stuff yet. In fact, uh, I think Chris has rigged the game and he should send me the app so I can inspect it on my end. All right. And I'm going to do so. Uh, let's take this back to my screen where I have observed the result. Ha! Um, and then I will, okay, uh, let's, I'm going to chat at Eric. Fine. Here's the machine. And that's at Rochambeau bundle. Send. And then yield to Eric. Cool. So we return here to find that I have been sent a Rochambeau bundle. And I'll be like, all right, fine. I'll go ahead and adopt that. Uh, and then I am going to make uh, my own Rochambeau, uh, which I trust. Uh, we'll we'll pretend that I actually like inspected the contents of this bundle to uh, assure myself uh, that it's honest. But also, if it's loaded, it should be loaded in my favor if I'm making it, uh, perhaps. And we'll call this Rochambeau uh, app. That's what we want to call this, I believe doesn't really matter. Now I have uh, a, a Rochambeau app uh, on, uh, on my device and I'm going to go ahead and start a game myself. And so we're going to say Rochambeau tack with a cutting repost. And we'll say Rochambeau. You need the dash app, yeah. Yep. yep. And then we're going to call this one uh, game two. No, game three. Uh, and then go ahead and evaluate that. All right. Probably so now. You call it game two? It doesn't. <laughs> no, it'll just override the existing. Um, yeah. And then Eric sends that my way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here. Yeah. Try this. Uh, Try defending against this at yeah, game three. I send to Chris. All right, cool. And, then, and I, I received that and I'm going to adopt it as game three. Is my screen visible to everyone? Yep. Yeah. All right. And then I will eval E game three. Uh, I will defend with Brock. And eval. Okay. Ah. <laughs> I am so good at this game. <laughs> I'm, the, I, I'm the eternal student. Will I ever, will I ever be good at Rochambeau? At this point, I'm thinking I should be generous and like write up a Rochambeau strategist app that folks can use to help them play Rochambeau, given that I know how to make the provably perfect Rochambeau AI. Um, so I'm going to show you that over in my terminal. Uh, and this is a demonstration of, of building, uh, developing a web application and sending it. Um, so over here at my terminal, I have written Stratego, the perfect, uh, the, the perfect Rochambeau strategist. And it is, this is a weblet. So just like the Rochambeau app, which just runs in a background worker and has no UI, this one's going to run inside of a web interface that's going to be isolated on whatever 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 user agent it's running in. So it's not going to reach out to the web like a DAP or like a web page. Um, but, and it's only going to have the powers that are conveyed to it through this powers object here. In this case, the powers that I want to grant it are basically like, person-like. I want to give it a profile um, so that when I receive advice from uh, my strategist, it'll say your strategist name, but whatever you named them has recommended rock, paper, or scissors. Chris? Uh, yes? 
You say it only has powers. On line five, it seems to have document. Yes, it has the powers of your web page. It's, it's, yeah. And in the fullness of time, this will actually be fully isolated using the same origin policy, so it can't reach out to arbitrary wherevers. Um, and being as that is being run by your web server, you can it will determine what your policy is and what holes it wishes to expose to you if you if, if we so choose to create APIs that allow that. Um, the so yeah, it's going to go here and it's going to use uh, performance now. Sorry, Mark. It's going to use performance now to generate a random number and select a strategy accordingly and send that as a message to its host, which is a power that I, I, I the host, will grant it or Eric, the host, will grant it, as it were. Um, so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do as the developer of Stratego is say endo bundle stratego.js, name that Stratego bundle. And then I am going to send Eric. Here is at Stratego Bundle, your new RPS advisor. You should install this with a Stratego guest power. That should work. All right. So I've sent Eric a message from the command line instead of going through the web user interface, but same thing. Take it away. And uh, did it come through? Ooh, no. no. All right, let's try again. I'll try again from the web. Oh, oh it looks like it went through on my side. We might maybe be... I need a refresh. Oh, yeah, I just needed a refresh. Um, so okay, uh, very well. Uh, I will go ahead and uh, install this uh, Stratego uh, application and see uh, if it can help me. So I actually need to go and make, uh, actually, I will do this. There is a way to do this on the command line also, uh, but we can, uh, uh, yeah, let's just do it on the command line. Right. So <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little shorter to do it. We'll... Uh, the button has yet to be added for this. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make um, a guest that I'm going to go ahead and call Stratego. And then I'm going to name it. Um, uh, so you have the, the first argument is the sort of, is the handle that I'll use the, to message with it. And then the Stratego agent is actually the powers object that has, uh, you know, that actually has capabilities to uh, do things um, uh, uh, in the daemon. And so I've created this and I see uh, my new Stratego agent here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and install uh, the Stratego bundle. I am going to give it the powers of Stratego Agent. I'm going to host it on a port that I happen to know I'm not uh, using. Uh, and I'm going to call this one Stratego App. And then I'm going to install that. Ah, OK, very well. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to try to strategize with this and, uh, and see what it comes up with. And. All right, cool. Very good. Uh, it, it recommends that I uh, that I use a rock uh, to attack Chris, which is what I'm going to do. So once again, I'm going to create a, a Rochambeau game. Uh, so I'm going to see, what did we call that again? Yeah, we called it Rochambeau app. So we, uh, we do e Rochambeau. Act. In the in the in the sidebar, Dean recommended in the future when we do this demo is that you and I use different names for the same thing. And I, it occurred to me that we could just use rock paper scissors on one side and Rochambeau on the other to drive the point home that these names are in a personal namespace. Um, they're they don't necessarily have the same names for us for each of us. That is, that is correct. Um, and I'm going to name this game four. All right. Yeah. All right. I am going to use my strategist on my side yeah. as soon as I've got it installed. Let's 
see uh, if you can defend yourself against a cyborg. And uh, I don't know, I forget to get it. I'm going to install. Yeah, I'll, I'll show, show you all what I'm up to. We're going to leave this one actually to chance instead of me rigging the game by watching his stream. Uh, endo install, and this is going to be. Um, uh, you're sharing your terminal if you're. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll run from here for a second. Let's see. <laughs> endo install dash B with, with the bundle uh, Stratego, bun uh, Stratego bundle. Powers of strat, just powers, and name this strategist. And listen on port. Okay, endo open strategist. That opens up my window. I will share that with you now. I press the strategize button. And then it recommends rock. Ha! Okay. <laughs> uh, first off, uh, let's see if you're going to get this game. And I'll adopt the game for as finale. Adapt. Adopt. Yeah. So I've got the finale game. And I'm going to eval. I'm going to send a me message. Endo to finale. Or let's call it fin. Here, and I'm going to defend with lock. Fin is finale, and it's a draw. Maybe one day I will be as good at Rochambeau as Chris. <laughs> All right. And that's, that's what we have to show you today. What we showed you was, uh, we, we showed you the new user interface, caplet, the applet, weblet, if you will, uh, for uh, permission management, a new weblet the, for, doing, uh, for doing a strategy and how to send that around and install it. And once it's boarded into the pet daemon network, uh, you can leave the terminal and then interact and then user, real users would distribute these in, through chat or possibly through a hub. Uh, and uh, all of this is based off of pet names for uh, uniquely identified objects that live on people's computers in their user agent and don't have a server. Right. And um, I think uh, there's one raised hand, but before we move to questions, I'll just say for the MetaMask audience, uh, we haven't run the pet demon inside of MetaMask yet, uh, but... Uh, we uh, we can modify it such that it does, and and we will, and then your um, uh, endo pet demon programs uh, can uh, run on your computer, someone else's computer. You can talk. Uh, you can talk to them. Uh, potentially, it could be on chain code on the Agoric chain, for example. Um, so yeah, yeah. This the, the, these these pet demons will. We are hoping. Film, uh, create a network that can run in an extension on a web page on your local host with different levels of privacy compromises and communication protocol availability. The core concepts work in all of these places. Um, and uh, and the invitations in particular, locations of capabilities, um, provide a connection hints that can be filtered based off of what protocols your particular daemon supports. Um, it will be necessary to add cryptography. Uh, we have not done that yet. It'll also not be necessary to write garbage collection. We haven't done that either. I see Dean's hand. I do have a hand up, yes. My question, or, or Totoro's question, um, is, um, so the Dean, UI- You have to use a different voice for Totoro. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, 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 so, so hence I removed it. My, my question. Uh, so 
you know, that you I had a lot of bits and pieces, not very familiar to most people, you know, in, in some ways kind of finicky and had lots of names sort of, in, you know, from a from a user interaction that showed all the pieces and sort of this intermediate term expansion, but not what do end to end use cases of this look like or how would it actually manifest in a wallet context or stuff like that? Do you guys have those scenarios written up and captured? So, you know, not as part of the demo, but but as the things that motivate, okay, we need this detection, these names are the ones that are not revealed, and what goes over here is this and that sort of stuff for I'm sending you money or I'm buying a book or I'm you know whatever whatever the the use cases were, were that, that that are driving this are. We do not yet. We have nuts and bolts, and huh. we get to bring we get to invent some uses. <laughs> we, we have uh, we're uh, all plumbing, no porcelain. Uh, okay. At, okay. At, okay. At the, the, the the card the programmable card game was more of a actual end user looking thing. Well, yeah. except that right, right. I mean, my my question is sort of how would that surface once I was no longer typing eval commands. Or, you know, I mean, there are scenarios I can imagine, you know. No, no, the, you didn't see the programmable game. There, there was a programmable game uh, DAP that you didn't see today. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and Aaron did brush that off uh, and gave it to me this morning or <laughs> last, last night. And it's it, not it, working it, already? What the heck? Oh, it, it works. It works. Oh. <laughs> I, I just didn't have time to prepare it for this demo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the... Uh, yeah, but yeah, that demo works again. And the, um, yeah, and, and there are a whole bunch of things that we can do to improve on where we have that with a lot of the preparation is already done. For example, interface guards are a reflection API for these capabilities. Yep. So we can auto generate forms for method invocation and you would never need to see, you would never need to see eval, uh, to do that right. yeah, yeah 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 among yeah. other things yeah uh the so like which is still a programmer level experience that i think the 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 real experience is um is an application a fully encapsulated application um having one button installs uh and uh being able to trade those applications and have those applications do all of the, the legwork for ui and interaction with captp right 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 okay yeah, I mean, I'd love to have just the story of the flow of what would be happening from a naive user that is now using, you know, for example, they've got MetaMask and they're installing a plugin and it lets them do things that are currently impossible because you just can't safely do them in any environment except this. Same for an app on, you know, with a blockchain backing it. For Agoric is here you can do these things that are impossible uh, without this. Or, you know, and even the simple case of stuff that is currently possible because, you know, that 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 changes in Chrome are going to make impossible in the browser. Here's how pet name, here's how the pet name daemon addresses those. And I just don't have the visual in my head. I know we need all these pieces. I just don't know where they fit easily in a in a, in, in application scenarios. One um one sort of um uh hypothesis uh, we have on the OCAP kernel team is that like the way this could look is it could look very similar to what snaps uh, look like uh, in MetaMask today, uh, which is, uh, you know, you get a request uh, to install uh, a snap, which is essentially an app or a plugin. Uh, it requests the uh, permissions or powers that it wants, uh, and then you're able to interact with it. It can interact with website websites and so on and other snaps. The problem with the system currently is that it's not uh, very composable, which is something that uh, Chris uh, alluded to earlier. We've essentially recreated uh, the same situation uh, that you have in um, mobile app stores and uh, extension stores, uh, at least in the sense of that, like each snap tends to be very monolithic, have a bunch of different uh, responsibilities. Like for example, we have like, you know, protocol or interoperability snaps that add non-EBM protocols to the wallet. They uh, both manage keys and they have very non-granular internet access. Uh, and so they don't have a single, uh, they don't have a single responsibility. And if they get supply chain attacked, like they can, the keys can be exfiltrated and it would be easily exfiltrated uh, and it would be a disaster. So one thing that we're uh, hoping to do with this for snaps is to make them smaller and more composable um, and also able to share capabilities dynamically at runtime without having to specify everything up front in a uh, static manifest file, which is also a current limitation of the system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so uh, 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 try some snaps uh, if you want to have an idea of what some of this um, uh, could look like. Yeah, and notably, Dan has already prototyped uh, a, a caplets that interact with the Orgoric chain and can issue transactions and such. Uh, and I think that that presumes that it's running inside of the node execution context, but it could definitely, I'm, I'm sure it could be extended to run in a web execution context too. Um, yeah. You can get to play with those, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I, I could throw in another like category of things that I think it, this will like unlock for just the SNAP system. I, I mean, I think there's so much potential around this, but um, one thing SNAPs can't do today, while they can talk to each other, since it's just over JSON RPC, you, you really struggle when you try to uh, delegate a, a capability multiple hops. So this especially shows up when you've got like dependencies that you want to manage. Um, uh, so like if you had a, a snap that usually just provides like a data source and you know maybe there's multiple other protocols that actually depend on having a good data source and they want to provide apis to uh to websites that then trigger lookups on that data source uh you, you quickly kind of recreate a confused deputy situation if you um, if you try to do it with json rpc um and and one of the use cases we started kind of illustrating this that uh, helped motivate our team was was ai being one of these like being able to have an access to an AI provider where you're not pasting your open AI key into every website. Maybe you can actually swap out a self-hosted provider um, while still giving maybe multiple scripts uh, the ability to access an, a, uh, an AI of your choosing and, and still provide their own services um, to, to other things. Um, so I, I think that that's, that's another neat one, but it's just like this category of things where it's like, you're not just providing the full package service yourself, but you might be a composition of other services. And as soon as you're in that situation, this is this is like a prerequisite. Very cool. Yeah, so I'll, I'll restate what I uh, said in chat there really quickly, which is that uh, composing snaps together is very tedious to do uh, today. Like the team essentially, because everything is JSON RPC, everything has to be sort of like, the hard coded and we have to create all of these like uh, exceptions and like boilerplate and stuff and uh, we also can't create dependency chains that are longer than two without opening ourselves up to confuse deputy attacks because of the stuff that dan was just talking about uh and so uh so that's another piece of the composability puzzle is that like we can actually have many snaps depending on each other in arbitrary uh, arbitrary ways along arbitrary paths Very cool. I must run as well. Thank you, guys. That was great. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Congrats on the milestone, guys. This is amazing. Thanks. Cheers, everyone.